pray that as we all come into this building, God, that you will just fill us with your presence and that your Holy Spirit will be here. And God, I pray that as we worship, we will all be joined together and we'll make a beautiful noise for you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you guys ready to thank God?
Jacob, whose love endures through generation. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. you now to do the same thing for me, for me, for me. And oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh
This is my desire to pour my love on you, coil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink, like water from the heart. I pour my love on you, if praise is like perfume. Mine on you. 
mercy fills the streets to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity. There will be a day when all bow before him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with you died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. Yeah. Holy is the Lord. And every prayer we prayed in desperation. Through doubt and fear, and in the end, we'll see that it was worth it when He returns to wipe away.
when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died and rose again holy holy is the lord oh holy holy is the lord yes holy holy is the lord you're so holy lord we worship you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, that through you, Lord, that we have this resurrection life through our King Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, that we get to join, Lord, with the angels and the saints, Lord, this morning, God, and worship together, Lord. Lord, so we do that this morning, God. We continue, Lord, to declare your praise, God, that you are holy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. There's none like you, God. Lord, so as we continue this morning, Lord God, would we engage heaven this morning, Lord? <laughs> Lord, we speak your name. We speak your praise. We declare your praise this morning with our lips, Lord God. We worship you.
this morning. Good morning, church. Hello. Gary, are you around? Are you from around here? (laughs) Um, I just want to welcome everyone in this uh, auditorium this morning. Just want to say thank you for welcoming me to stand in front of you this morning. And also, I just want to welcome the online viewers. Uh, to let me speak through your media outlet you have in your home, whether it's a cell phone, whether it's a television in your home, seated at your couch. But I just want to say thank you for welcoming me in your home. Today, um, before I go on talking about what God has put on my heart, I just want to express thanks to Pastor Jimmy, Pastor Kate, for giving me this opportunity to stand and speak the last I am. (laughs) The last I am. And I'm so excited to speak about this. I am. And I hope you guys are too. This morning, I would like to start by sharing a little testimony. Me and my family, we traveled, we went to Lincoln, New Hampshire. I don't know if it has ever happened to you guys, but it happened to us. As soon as we walked in to check in for us to go to our beds and whatever, this guy, he's from Jamaica, then he said, asking us so many questions, and Tony was putting on this remix t-shirt, a hoodie. He goes, what is that? He goes, it's our church where we're coming from. And he starts talking a lot about there's no church here that I can connect to. Then immediately as he was talking, he starts prophesying on, on us. It took like about 30 minutes for us to check out. But he was <laughs> <laughs> to check in. It, but he was saying something to our souls, our spirits. And God just poured his presence in that. Check in, put place. People are walking in, people are walking out, but he's prophesying to us, each one of us, me, Brandy, Tatonda, and Laviel. And I just like, God, I am amazed that in the times that I didn't expect you, you showed up. The time when I was going there, I was, depra- I was depressed because I didn't have money. I didn't have anything to be there, but I'm there depressed. And God starts speaking something to my spirit. And I started worshiping God in that moment. That's my testimony for the weekend. (laughs) And I just love it. Because God can speak anytime without you expecting, can speak. 
All you have to do is pay attention and listen to his voice. And listen to his voice. I could, could have been easily translated that moment as harassment. Okay? I could have translated that, the whole thing to focus on the wrong things and sue the people. But I noticed the voice of God in that moment that that man was there to speak something to me. This morning, as I start, I want to share something. I want to ask you a question this morning. When you hear the term worship, what do you connect that term to? If I ask, do you worship this morning, what are you going to connect that term to? Obvious answer is going to be saved. I connect that term to singing, to songs. You connect everything. Did you worship this morning? If you didn't have any music playing, you say no. Did you worship this morning if there was no time that Sarah and the team lead us in the worship? You say no, we didn't worship. Because in your mind, worship is connected to what? Singing. I'd like to quote a lady. She was a Holocaust survivor and a Christian evangelist. Her name is Corotin Boom, the author of uh, Hiding Place. And she said, I've learned to hold all things loosely so that God will not pry them out of my hands. I want you guys to think about that. Your mind is conformed to songs. That's what you call worship. Your mind is conformed to somebody leading you to sing a song before the preaching happens. Then you call that worship. My heart is breaking to see the church morphing to this new kind of worship. Morphing to this kind of worship where we are tied our hands If we don't sing, God does not move. If we don't sing a song, God does not do anything. Worship. I just want to clarify something. Worship is not slow songs. Worship is not about what we do here. This is part of it. Not all of it. It's part of it. Not all of it. Worship is not defined in a timeline. Worship is not defined in a place where there are great guitarists, pianists. That's not where worship is. We are morphing to something. You know why? Because singing, pay attention does not demand anything on us. Worship demands something upon our lives. Because worship is obedience to God. You can sing, you can play music, but if you don't obey God from this point on, it doesn't matter. You do not worship God. It's obedience. How much do you obey God? I remember I shared weeks ago about the story in Genesis chapter 22. Can you go and read again that passage? And you understand that's the beginning where God mentioned worship. I just wanted to clarify that because this whole content I'm going to be talking about, I am today, is going to be wrapped in this Package called worship. How much do you obey him? How much do you obey the God you are professing? How much do you obey him? That's where it's going to be wrapped around. So you, I'm asking you to hold everything, ideas about worship loosely and let God take over that to teach you what does it mean to abide. To What does it mean to 
mention the name I am. What does it mean? This morning, as I'm attempting to talk about I am, for the whole six weeks we've been talking about I am, I am, I am. And today, as I'm thinking about this I am, I'm reminded about this, a portion of scripture from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8 through 9, where Paul says that he has to share the endless treasures of God. How can I share the endless treasures of God in 30 minutes? Think about that. How can I do that? That's why it took us like six weeks talking about I am. How can we describe this man called Jesus? How can we talk about this man? No wonder that he was given about five, uh, 256 names because they couldn't pin him down. <laughs> they couldn't pin him down. He has so many names. Where do you start about his names? He's the father to the orphans. Think about it. He's a husband to the widow. <laughs> For those who travel in the, in the night, he's a bright morning star. Jesus, we're talking about. He's a bright morning star. What about during the night? He is the fire behind you. <laughs> during the day, is a cloud. The night is the fire. What about those who are walking in the valley right now? Let me remind you, he's the lily of the valley. He's there with you in that valley. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the honey in the rock. He is the table prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. He is the table prepared for me in the presence of my enemies who are tearing me down. But God says, I am there. He's the pearl of great price. He's the rock in the wheel of land. He's the cup that, he's the cup that does not run over. He's the load and the staff that comforts me. The government says they shall, they shall rest upon his shoulders. How can we explain Jesus in 30 minutes in all these things? Can you imagine? How can you explain Jesus? Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the living God, my companion, my savior, my king of kings, my lord of lords. How can I explain him? <laughs> he stands and confines every expert in the world. Think about that. In chemistry, he turned water to wine. In chemistry. Think about that. How can you explain that? In biology, what about the virgin birth? How can you explain that? This man, Jesus, he dis dis disproved the law of gravity by ascending to heaven. Can you go up? <laughs> he disproved the law of gravity right there. Boom, he goes up. Oh, I don't know about you guys, but my mind is blown. When you can also read in the scripture where it says, he confronts even People of economics, where he turned five blocks of bread and two fishes and feed thousands of people. <laughs> How did he do that? This Jesus is amazing. This Jesus we're talking about, he blows my mind off. Think about this. The same Jesus, he healed the sick without prescription. He healed the sick. Without prescription. Jesus. We, for us to get medication, where do we run first? I need prescription, please. But Jesus comes in and heals you. No prescription needed. He had no servants, but he, they called him master. He had no degree, but they called him teacher. He had no medical doctorate, but they called him a healer. He had no an army, but he was a king who was feared by everybody else. He had no military. 
He had never won any military battles, but he has conquered the world. The world. Think about that. He has committed no crime at all. But they crucified him for who he is. Of who he is. And they put him in the tomb. But guess what? The death could not even pin him down to. He rose again. And he walked out because death could not hold him down. Jesus. Jesus. He got up and woke up. This morning I would like to start to speak about ownership. I want to talk about ownership. In this great picture of all I am, you can see from the first week we started, he starts saying, I am this. I am that. He said, mentioning everything who he is. He's declaring, proclaiming who he is. I am from Africa. <laughs> no wonder. Look at me. I'm from Africa. <laughs> and in Africa, we have kings and chiefs. When a king is walking by the village, there's a person in front of it beating the drum. And everybody who hears the voice of that drum, it's a particular drum. It's not any drum play. It's a particular drum that you know this is about loyalty. Somebody is walking in my place. I've got to be there. You are compelled, you're pushed to be there, regardless. What you're doing, you drop everything, you move because you want to meet this special, worthy person. Because you know, if you don't make it, sometimes you can lose your life. Yeah. Sometimes you could lose your life. Sometimes you could be excommunicated from the village. You lose everything. You will never be there again. Now, you have to move that one because of fear, two, because of interest. You want to know who this person is. That's where I'm coming from. When I hear the name of Jesus, my heart rumbles. My heart shakes because I want to see him. If we are declaring the name of Jesus in this, in this place, I want us to rumble. Not just, I, I just want to see the name of Jesus. Really? Really? You just want to sing the name of Jesus in your mentioning it. There's not even power. You just... I just want to know. <laughs> Excuse me. When you mention the name of Jesus, should rumble you, should shake you, should move you from where you are. The name of Jesus heals people. The name of Jesus delivers people. The name of Jesus sets you free. It is shake you. The name of Jesus. It's not a say. It's a reality of this Jesus I'm talking about. When you read John chapter 18, you understand what happened on this particular day. When Jesus was in the same many, And all these, an army, a cohort of Roman soldiers came with Judas Iscariot to arrest him. What happened that night? Do you know what happened? Jesus steps out and asks a question, whom are you looking for? And they say, Jesus, the Nazareth. Guess what happens when he steps out and he says, I am. What happens? They fall back and all of them on what? On the ground. Read the scripture. It was not just, I'm Jesus. No. No. The whole place shook and they knew the deity is here. Yeah. Jesus is claiming his name. I am here. Yeah. And if you understand this term, I am, it's not I was. He's always present in every moment, in every situation. When we talk about declaring the name of Jesus over, over, over your family, count it real. It's happening. 
it's happening. It's happening. Healing is happening. If you mention the name of Jesus. If you mention the name of Jesus. He said, I am. Where can I connect these two passages? If you go back into Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. Is it chapter 3? Yes, it is. Exodus chapter 3. When Moses and God having a conversation on a burning bush. What word? Wh whom I, am I going to tell people sent me? What did God say? I am. I am. God said, I am. Church, don't make mistake. When you hear J Jesus saying, I am. He's saying, I am God. I am God. Not Jesus from Mexico, but Jesus. <laughs> Not Jesus from other... No! He's saying, I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh standing in front of you. That's what Jesus is saying. And immediately that should drop you to your knees and worship him. That, if you hear the name of Jesus, that should take you to your knees and worship him. To take your knees and worship him. Where you said, I don't care about everybody else. All I care about is my master who's in this room. I don't care about how you look at me, but all I care is about Jesus. You go beyond the norm. You become crazy because people the word, oh yes, I'm crazy. I'm crazy for who? Jesus. I am crazy for Jesus. For six weeks we have talked about the bread of life. The light of the world, the door, the, the door of the sheep and the good shepherd and resurrection. And the way, the truth. And the light that was last week. All those I ams, they're responding something to a spiritual walk with Jesus. They respond, it's responding something to a walk with Jesus. Because Jesus says... The only church that is going to stand. Because Jesus understands this thing. People love churches. You know that? People that will say, I want to find a good church. The, do you understand what they mean sometimes? I think the good church that accepts me the way I am. Okay, number one. The good church that has a good children's ministry going. Yeah, number two. The good church that has teen Ministry going on. Yeah, number three. Things about what they're comfortable in. Not things that can change their life. There are so many good churches out there. You can find, you can look. But I want you when you're coming into this church called Remix. You don't have to look for the name. You have to look for this particular name. Jesus. If you walk in that day, you have to be looking. Is there Jesus in this place? If you find him, sit down and worship him. Because everything else can go away, but Jesus will remain the same. Everything else will crumble, but Jesus will remain the same. So when you are in this place because of Jesus, you have the ownership of the heaven in you, sitting in your heart, the ownership of Jesus comes and makes a home and a table in here for you to be here. I am Jesus. He claims his ownership. He claims that ownership. But where does it start? It starts by you opening your heart. It's called relationship. I don't know how you meet Jesus. I don't know how you meet, let me put it this way, I don't know how you meet, if you're married, your wife, I don't know how. But I watched this clip in a video sometime, a man was walking, he was busy, and he bumped into this lady, and then everything dropped, and he helped her to pick up the things, and today they're married. That was their meeting. Meeting Jesus sometimes is just the same. You can bump him. And there you meet Jesus. Sometimes Jesus can, make you, can meet you in your sick bed. 
Because sometimes Jesus can meet, may meet you in your car accident. You flip, 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 boom. Oh, Jesus, I meet you now. <laughs> Jesus, you can start a relationship with Jesus anywhere. He has no particular place where you should be. The only thing he's looking for, you open your heart for him. And he walks in and he says, things, they're going to be different. And he comes in and goes, boy, things, they're going to be different. And you go, how? He said, never mind. Things are going to be different when Jesus steps in your life. Look at this man. I'm from the little village in Malawi, very little village. I've told you many stories about this, but I've got a whole bunch of stories because every day God is surprising me. Every day God is moving me from step to another because I opened up my heart for him to say, God, here I am. I want to know about you. And he says, son, I'm going to take you for an adventure. And you're going to love it. But it's not going to be exciting all the time, but you're going to love it. And it has been an adventure for me, living Malawi and coming here and being incorporated in this wonderful family. Think about that. God can do that. Can move you from here and send you to wherever he wants to send you and incorporate you to other people. Because God, he is God of adventures. He is God that wants to surprise you all the time. The only big thing is open your heart to him and encounter him. Don't encounter the church. Count Jesus. Because church, I will disappoint you as a preacher. I will disappoint you with my theology. I will disappoint you with my system, the way I run. I can run a church. I can run anything. I will disappoint you. But when you meet Jesus, you know you have the real deal. You will never be disappointed. You will never turn back. Oh, that pastor is horrible. He's teaching me bad things. No, no, you didn't meet Jesus. Go back and meet Jesus. <laughs> you go back and meet Jesus. We are humans. We can mess up too. Yes, I'm a pastor. I'm a human. I can mess up. Trust me. Ask my family. They'll tell you. He sometimes is very... He's a very stubborn man. <laughs> I'm human. Relationship starts there. When you encounter Jesus, everything about what you think about church is ripped off. In the I am true vine statement. Actually, that's what I'm talking about. True vine. <laughs> true vine statement. <laughs> true vine statement. <laughs> In the time when, this Jesus, when Jesus mentioned this statement, there were so many vines. It was a Passover time, and there were so many vines. And he said, oh, guys, listen, I am the true vine. What did it mean, and what does it mean now? When you look at the world, there's so many. I talk to my daughter all the time. I said, listen, there are all beautiful songs out there. But can you follow the songs that uh, they are uplifting and worshiping God. Because there are so beautiful songs out there. They are sung in the church. Sometimes you can't even trace the word of God. And they sing, where is the word of God in this song? I thank Sarah and the team. They always choose songs that lead us to God. But some other churches, you walk in and go, what did we just sing about? <laughs> it was love, 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 love. Yeah, love. What is it? Because people are not centered in the true vine. There are so many churches out there that are preaching, well, the same Jesus. But not the same Jesus as Jesus says, believe me, obey me, and love me. It's, not diff it's different. The second thing is I want to talk about is abiding in him, is intimacy. I brought this, uh, uh, this bowl. I want to show you something. When you abide in the presence of God, when you abide in God, what happens when you abide in him? This is food coloring, by the way, so it's, the water is going to change to what color I put it in there. I'll put it as thick as it can be. Uh oh it's done. <laughs> but 
if you can look at this, the word is what? Red. When I mention about the word abiding, let me put it up here. I'll be very careful, I promise. I promise. But the, God has called you. You've opened your heart to him. And God says, welcome me in your heart. And you've welcomed him. His presence starts saturating you. What happens when you abide to him? You absorb his presence. If I put this in here, it's white, but it's going to change the color completely. If you dip it in completely in there, I got, I got something. Ah, don't cry. How good. <laughs> so everything is messed in. You saw the time that I said putting this in. It was not just junk it in there. It was time, moments to go in there. When I talk about abiding in, abiding in God, it does not take a switch button. It doesn't happen that way. It does not take a microwave, a microwave, micro oven pop. Ah, it's done. It does, it's not that way. It takes time to abide in Jesus. Then it takes time to abide in Jesus. When you abide in him, you will absorb the whole thing has changed color. To what color now? Red. You absorb the presence of God when you abide in him. When you abide in him, your, the presence of God stays with you. What is... what? What do we find in the presence of God? We find the power of God in there. We find the feelings of God in there. You find the thoughts of God in there. Because you're abiding in him, you think like what God is thinking right now. You start feeling about the community the way God is feeling about the community. Because you're abiding in the presence of who? God. If you don't abide in God, you just, hey, Jesus, Jesus, guess what? There's no presence of God walking with you because you didn't abide to him. It's a simple mathematics. When Jesus said, I will build my church, and my church only will stand against the gates of hell, it means everyone in that church should abide to him because he is running the church to he, according to his system, not your system. Most of the time, we want to run the things of God in our own system. The way we think things should be. Remember I said, what Colton Boom said, hold things loosely. Sometimes we have things the way the church should be like this. If they are worshiping, they have to worship like this. If they are reading the Bible, they have to read like this. Because there are things we have hold on to. Now you are forgetting that's the way you think the church should be. Not the way Jesus thinks the church should be. Because church, the owner of the church is Jesus. Everything we do should be operating under Jesus. Under Jesus. Because he's the true vine. He's the true what? Vine. There are other vines out there. Your vine. The vine that you created, it's your vine. The way church should be done, it's your vine. Listen, the church of Jesus is laid by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit decides the way the flow of things should go, and the way things should go. And everyone else should just open hands up. God, we surrender to you. Take over. If we come to that level and we worship God in depth because we have surrendered everything to him. The last part I want to mention is about good food here. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not putting this down here. <laughs> Why is it now? <laughs> All right. The last part I want to talk about represent. I want to talk about representation which is fruitfulness. I want to define a little bit about fruits. 
fruits can be, div- can, can, can be described as just l- reality of repentance. When you read Ma- Matthew chapter 3, verse 7, 3, 8, when John told the Sadducees, you blood vipers, <laughs> you blood vipers, who want you to flee from wrath to come, therefore bear, f- bear the fruits worthy of repentance. That could be used that way too, the fruits. What about the false prophets? They have their own fruits too. You know them by their fruits. You know them by their fruits. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15, 16 says, You will know them by their what? By fruits. What about the works of God that be performed? You know this is the work of God is happening here by seeing the fruits, what God is doing in the lives of people. At this remix church, you know that this is God doing by the fruits that is being produced out of this auditorium. Going out there, people will say, this is Jesus. Let me put it this way to you. If you can look at your life, what fruit are you producing in your community, in your home? Let me start with your wife. What fruit are you producing, you and your wife and your husband and your wife? What fruit are you producing in your home with your kids? Because your kids, if I want to know about you, I'll just go to your kids and say, how's your mom? (laughs) And they'll tell me everything about you. You go, ah, I didn't know about Sean, really? No, I'm going to (laughs) say. But I, I will ask your kids, when they come to youth group to, on Friday, how's your mom? Oh, yeah. They were in the fight. I go, whoa, okay. <laughs> they were in the fight. Oh, they'll tell me, oh, now they're splitting. You go, wow. Oh, how will I do that? As a believer, we have things that we have to grow into to bear fruits. Have you ever read the book of Galatians chapter 5? Have you ever read that book? Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22nd to 23rd. It will talk about something. About what fruit should be buried, should be coming out of you. <laughs> Is there fruits on this thing? But it's a vine where the grapes are attached to. Let me try to attach a grape. Can you attach? Holy moly, check for Al. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> hmm. I'm hungry. <laughs> But when you read Galatians chapter 5, verse 22nd to 23rd, it will describe this as a fruit. One big fruit. If you're connected to a vine, this will produce a lot of things. You're connected to a vine. A lot of it will be coming out. Woohoo! There we go. Yeah. Because you are connected to the main vine. People will know you that you have kindness. I can be eating one by one. Because they can see it. It's visible. They can see it in you. Can I convince you there are fruits here? Can I convince you? There are fruits here. Can you guys see it? It's impossible. This is visible. When you walk out of this door, what kind of fruit are they seeing in you? Is it kindness? Is it love? Is it faith? When it hits hard? Is it? Ooh, I don't know. What, is, what kind of fruit? Is, is it rage, anger, depression? Are you sure? Because all those are fruits too. 
Anxiety is what the people see. What are they seeing in you? What do they see when they see you? You are saying, I belong to Jesus at the same time. <laughs> You're professing something totally different. You can sing, you can say all you want. People, they're looking to see the what? And you, when they see the fruit, you don't have to tell them that I'm a Christian. They will know you're a Christian. Without you saying anything, because that's how Jesus works. People know you better in your community. In here, we are all holy. <gasps> Hallelujah. <laughs> if I go to my workplace where I have 45 people under me, they know who I am when I'm angry, when I'm upset. Oh, they know that I'm, I'm a person that I care for them. Whether they mess up, I correct and walk with them to make things right. They know when you're working in that construction area, when and you miss hammer, and hammer your thumb, you go, what words do you produce after you? <laughs> hey, I don't want to say that word. But you say it, you know it. It comes out of your mouth. It's visible, and people can hear you. And when you say, I'm Christian, they'll go, wait a minute. If I go in that church, the whole church is going to bend down because you are the reason why people don't come to church. Your fruit, they know it. Your lifestyle, the way you live, they know it. They know you have left this man to them marry that one. You have left this man to marry that one. You've left. They know about your life. They know it. It's your fruit. You're bearing it. They know it. You have left this woman to this, wom to this woman, to another woman. They know it. You don't have to explain it to them. But if you abide to Jesus, you dwell your days to think about love, self-control, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, and goodness and faith. You'll find all these characters there for you to bear. What are you doing? To bear those fruits. Jesus says, I am. Represent him in that community you live in. Represent him. The one you're caring, represent him in your off offices. Teenagers, do I have teenagers in here? Represent him in your schools, please. Let them know that you belong to Jesus. Let them know you're representing Jesus. Let them know. You are carrying the power of Almighty God. As we end our service today, I would like to encourage you to stand up with me. Sarah, could you sing through the same, speak the name of Jesus again? I want us to speak the name of Jesus. I, I have a feeling of this, that you have to do your part. Speak it. The name of Jesus. I want to speak the name of Jesus. I just don't want to just say it as casually saying it, but meaning it in my heart. You know what you're going through right now. There's a situation that you need to speak the name of Jesus to. It's not going to take me to speak to it. You have to do it. Because the same Jesus I'm serving is the same Jesus you have. Not my Jesus is special. No, he's not special. The same Jesus is always worthy and special to everyone. As we sing through this song, I want you to speak to that situation. Whether it's sickness, speak to it. Whether it's a family member that is sick, speak to that family member. And Jesus is right there and things will happen.
burn like fire. If you want to come up front just to lay down on the floor, uh, in front, come. The, oh, the order is open for you. Come. Your come name is and say it. Your name is life. To break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like fire. Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is light. To break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn said last week that this is not going to be a church that's about manufacturing moments, but allowing space for the Holy Spirit and not be rushed, not be subject to a calendar or a clock because God Almighty is not. I was going to share a word during worship and I just sensed no, no. But no sooner than the first two minutes of Pastor Albert's message, it just was confirmed because he challenged us. What is worship? If you strip the music away, if you strip the songs, you take it away, what do you, when you say you worship Jesus, what are you left with? And the word I was going to share was how I describe worship. Be still and know that I am God. Because the word there in the Hebrew to know, we've shared it, and he had it up there, is yada, which is intimacy. It's where you get that expression, you know, you know, you know. It's yada, 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 yada. That's what you're saying. Did you realize that's what you're saying? But it's more than to just know something, have knowledge. It's to intimately know. Be still and know that I am God, because I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. The picture Albert gave us of those things that we hold tight to, and God can't strip them away because we're clung so tight to him. God's saying, I am the God of heavenly armies. I am your fortress. I am the one who will set free. I am the one who will break chains. If you would just slowly start to open your hands and allow him to strip those things away, to allow the healing to take place. I think sometimes in church we get a little... We think it's awkward when it's quiet. Like, oh, there's supposed to be something. I should be hearing something. Maybe God's saying, you don't audibly need to be hearing something. You need to tune into more into me, the true vine, and let me speak to your soul. Connect to God Almighty. There's nothing wrong with, with quiet. There's absolutely nothing wrong. The difference is, you know, the world will tell you, just clear your mind. Fill your mind with thoughts of your father who loves you, who sent his son for you. Personalize that. Jesus died for me. When I have this image of heaven, when it talks about heavenly armies, a fortress being built on my behalf, think Think of all the people that have gone before us. Heaven's got a lot of people in it right now. There's a lot of people. And guess what? We sang it this morning. Holy, holy, holy. If you don't know what else to say, holy, holy, holy are you Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. 
It's that simple. Don't encounter church. Encounter God. Because this is not about remix church. This is about God's church. Yes. He's preparing you still. I say he's positioned and prepared us. He's still preparing us. Because there's great darkness. And we need to be more like this than like this in order to answer and respond to those things that he is calling us collectively as a church to be engaged into. I was meeting with Aaron and Teresa. They are our missions directors this morning. And you know that we're embarking, going to be embarking in this whole human trafficking thing. And we were talking about certain things. Do we, do we show this? Do we talk about this? And I said, because it, 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 I mean, it's beyond rated R, some of this stuff. And I said, as dark and as dirty as some of this is, light is not brought to it, if the church doesn't engage the gates of hell, um, this is why we've got to be connected to that true vine more so than ever, individually and corporately as a church body, it will just be a, a good effort, a good attempt. But we so, as your pastor, as our leadership here, we implore you guys to be connected to the word and in prayer. Hallelujah. For your own personal relationship with God the Father. But as a church body, that's this uniting, this, this weaving together of a tight fabric of believers of a church family that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. It cannot even get through because that fabric is so tightly sewn that nothing can get through it. I really believe that's the image that God's given me of this church family coming together. God's ministering. God is healing. There's been testimony this week of healing. True healing. Sustained healing. Not a one-time thing. rather simply linger in the presence of God than go about life just bouncing from one challenge to the next. Life's always going to have its challenges. Instead of inviting God into your day, how about we just engage Him? Now. Engage Him. Brother Robert, would you close us in prayer this morning? Yes. Jesus, Yahweh, our Lord, Yeshua. <laughs> we stand before your presence right now, God. We thank you, God, for challenging us. We thank you, God, for speaking to us. We thank you, God, for motivating us. We thank you, God, God, for kicking us apart to start moving. We've been sitting comfortably for a long time, doing things on our own way. 
But God, now you're calling us to be attached, to be so connected to you as a true vine. God, as we go out this week, I pray that let the Holy Spirit be upon us. Let the fellowship of your Holy Spirit be with us. Because God, when we speak, we'll speak what you want us to speak to our community. We'll speak what you want us to talk about to our family. You will speak what you want us to talk about to our workplaces, to our schools, because you are in us. And we're speaking on your behalf. Whether it's to bring healing to that sick body, God will speak the name of you, Jesus. Whether it's to break breakthrough to that family, we'll speak the name of Jesus. Whether it's to, to bring deliverance to somebody, God will speak the name of Jesus. Because your name has power. Your name breaks every chain. God, as we go, we pray. Let your presence go with us. And continue speaking to us. Of who you are to us. Because God. As a church we are still describing who you are. But God you know how. To define yourself to all of us. I pray God speak to us. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Can we give him praise this morning? He is so very good. Thank you God. Thank you God. Well, thank you guys. That concludes our seven-week I Am series. Just a, a real powerful time these last seven weeks. And we're not stopping there. Next week, we are doing our first Testimony Sunday, Our Story, His Glory. I'm going to have our good friend Sean Canazaro up here with me, and we are going to allow him the space, the opportunity to share his testimony, the evidence, the proof of a life transformed because of Jesus Christ. So don't miss it. Be with us next week. And then we're going to start a whole nother mini-series. So God bless you guys. We love you. Thank you for being here. Have a great week. Continue to press into him. Amen.